Sorry about that, the uh, screencast only allows you to do 15 minutes per video, so I just reached the 15 minute threshold. But anyway, the group is actually a reference to a specific type of command. If you notice in the My Help, let's go to T, uh, you go to text field, you have a text field, and then you have text field group. Uh, the group has additional features. Uh, you may or may not use them all. I think uh, one thing about the group is it allows a label, I think, in front of the word. Um, I don't really know which one's offhand. Uh, yes, the group has uh, more attachments too. Yeah, looks like it has some column width, column attach attributes, as well as some column offsets. And for the most part, I find myself using the groups, anything with the groups. Um, so like if I see a text field, I'll try to find a text field group. Uh, there's also a text field button group here, which would basically be the same thing as we saw here for my window, except it would have a button. And it's typically on the right side. So you'd have a you have a text field and then you'd have a button. Text field and then button. So um <coughs> for each one of your uh different types of objects you should name them you should always name your objects in my case I haven't um, you should typically name them something you would um, want to name them in my case I'm just really making jargon just because if I don't have anything there then what's gonna happen is it's just gonna keep generating uh, the code if I kept executing the same code over and over again, I might notice that the button is being renamed every time it's being created. It might say button 18 next time, and then I rerun the code again, it'll say button 19, and so on and so forth. And, you know, I've edited this window 500 times, and now the buttons are reaching the 500 numbers. So, this is so you definitely want to make these much more meaningful in that regard. And, uh, but of course, like, since I'm just basically showing the demonstration um, I'm just I got jargon in there so um, basically the button itself would require a command and uh, obviously the button would not do anything right now so you need a command but let's figure out what kind of command we need I don't know offhand because between the, all the different types of buttons I use they all have a different uh, keying system um, and I'll show you what I mean but uh, in this case the button is C for command which means I need to run a script um, by scripts it's like functions modules uh, classes objects etc etc um, so it has to be a specific action is basically what it's saying it's also uh, you can create it you can query it or you can edit it which means I can edit the label of the button I can check to see if the button exists, or I can just recreate the button. Or, well, not recreate, just create the button. Um, so, in this case, the command is C. So, I will type C, and then I'll say do something. Alright, so now that we have that, we need to define do something, and this is kind of important. Um, first of all, um, everything goes from the way Python reads everything. It, it's from the top to the bottom. So if I create a function below here, then and then I reference it before it's even in, being referenced, before I actually create the reference, then it's going to give me an error. So if I have the words do something here, then I need the function do something to be above this in some regard. In this case, I like to keep it kind of simple. So, like the window and all everything would be right here in this kind of a, like a box area. So, I would try not to put the functions with the inside of this. I wouldn't want to put the function like right in here uh, because that might be a little bit confusing to me. Um, so, I generally create the functions up at the top. Um, and sometimes the functions require other functions and you have to have one function to be above another function in order to run the function below it. So in this case, uh, this will be 
DEF, which stands for, um, I think it's define, but uh, it's basically a function. And then I use the do something, do something, and I'm using camel case, which is a lower case first letter, and then uh, uppercase whichever word is next. And then if I were to keep having something, it'd be like done. Oh, work. Not work. Uh, and I know I misspelled work, but um, so like each subs uh, each word that I'm adding on to it would be uh, capitalized. But in this case, is do something, and do something, which is a function, has to be um, has to have brackets because it has parameters. You can funnel things into different functions. So, just like the if statement, and I'm going to have to have a colon, and I'll press enter, and then a tab. Make sure that's one tab. Yeah, that's, that's one tab. Okay, so I have one tab, and then it's going to do something, and I'm going to say cmds.sphere, and then I'm going to close it, and so when it, when I press the button, it's going to go to do something, and you'll notice that the do something does not have parentheses in this, and that's just because of the pymail command. It cannot have parameters. Um, if you want parameters, you're going to have to use something called a lambda. It's kind of complicated. Uh, try not to do it. Try to avoid it as much as possible for now because it's pretty advanced. So uh, uh, it, it finds the function above it, do something, and then it looks at the parameters and the colon goes into the argument and then sees that it's going to create a sphere and it should create the sphere on the origin of some random size or some default size um, but there's one thing to note every time you create a button um, it attaches some type of argument it's, it's automatically a parameter that gets stored so uh, inside the do something you need to have, the, have a star which is basically the 8 key on your keyboard and then args, which is basically just a default word that just absorbs um, whatever the argument is. Arg stands for arguments, and the star basically means any parameters that passes through it stored in this. And we're not going to use it because it, there's nothing there, there's nothing of use. It's just a default thing that gets attached to the button, and you don't need to worry about it. But if you do have a button, you need to have the args. Um, a lot of times I'll have functions that won't even have the args so but if it is a button it has to have the args so that's for the emphasis so now I'm just going to close that and highlight everything press enter on my numpad and there we go you'll notice that my new jargon has been transferred onto the buttons but that does not mean that they are labels okay that just means that it's just the name of the button and because I have not labeled the button it's storing it as that. If I wanted to in fact label the button what I would do is I would come back over here and then I would type L is equal to and then I can use apostrophe or I can use a quote it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to say uh, sphere and then I put another comma Make sure it's the closed, the quotes are closed around it. So I just close that. And there you go. So now I have the sphere labeled, but the object's name is still my jargon name. So uh, when I reference it, I need to reference this. And that kind of gives me a way to label it something really abstract. Um, so let's say if I had a bunch of spheres that are different sizes, but I wanted all the buttons labeled to be spheres for some reason, I could do that, and it wouldn't affect it, because each object would be named, in it, and it's kind of just like a string. So hopefully when I click this little button here, and there's my sphere. And in this case, it's a NURB sphere. Um, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, if I needed to know a command that I just can't find, but I know it's here, like a polysphere, what is the command for polysphere? I have no idea. So, uh, I mean, I might it might be polysphere. I could, I could just be right. Um, but let's just say I I click 
on sphere. I'll just click it in space. And I look over here and it says, okay, okay yes, polysphere is the command that I would use. And then I would look up in the my help, go to P, and wow, that's a lot of polys. Uh, so I look for polysphere, and now I have all my flags for a polysphere. And it even tells me a little bit of an example. Um, so for each one of the flags, uh, I can set the radius. It's going to tell me it's a linear, meaning that it's, uh, it looks like Z. Uh, C the default is 0.5 so every time I create a sphere with no without having the R tag it's going to default to 0.5 when I query it's going to give me a float um, that's actually kind of cool a lot of times the commands won't even tell you this uh, so this is kind of a rare exception but uh, it must be used pretty frequently and for them to incorporate that so um, the linear in this case would just be some sort of point variable it's going to be some sort of an int, or well, I guess a float in this regard. Um, the differences between ints and floats are pretty minor, you know, because uh, when the ints get calculated, it's it gets a point zero added to it. Um, but if you use an int, then it you can't have anything in the point. So like I can't say eleven point one; it would just round it to eleven point zero. Um, so a lot of times I just use floats. It just well, it's a lot easier for me, but everyone's a little bit different. Some things, just because it says int here, uh, doesn't mean that you can't put in uh, 1.5. It's going to round it to two, but you, know, you could still do that if you wanted to. Um, so I feel like the float just gives me a little bit more flexibility uh, when I'm trying to. Yes, I know my performance is slow. Thank you. I'm making a movie. Um, and so, anyway, uh, that's pretty much just the, the basics of the, the PyMail coding. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I know I haven't gone too in-depth about the creating the GUI. I mean, the whole instance of this movie was to show you how to utilize the code. And with the knowledge I've given you, you can kind of figure out uh, a little bit of how things are putting together. Um, uh, for future reference, if you wish to create uh, m more advanced GUIs, I would recommend going to the layouts located under the windows and you have all your organizing UI, UI components located right here in a convenient area. Um, there's the column layout, the form layout, the frame layout. Uh, I'm not sure what a layout generally does. Uh, that's kind of weird. A lot of times I use the row column layout, which is kind of like a grid. So you can specify how many rows you have and then how many columns. Um, there's also the row layout in case, you know, uh, for here I want to put my button and checkbox. I want them to be in the same row. Um, all these are interchangeable as long as you remember that you're set parent here, um, that you keep these in check. Uh, your set parents need to correspond to which. Um, which layouts you're referring to. So uh, the tab layout is typically if you're going to have tabs kind of like at the top of my um, Chrome here, uh, that's pretty much the tab system and it'd be referenced there. Um, if you want to create menus you would actually use the menu here. You would use the uh, you would create the menu and then use the menu item to create all the like the file edits and all the stuff. These are called menu items. Um, and let's see, and the shelf is pretty much just for Maya, as in, don't really worry about that right now. Um, all your controls, your sliders, your buttons, and everything can be found here uh, for adding different things. Um, each one of their has their own set of commands, so some of them do, like this one would do it based off a change, some of them would do it based off a button, uh, so you need to be wary that this one's always changing. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll try to uh, help you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching.